If you had a superpower, the power to wield technology to solve a problem in the world, what would you use it for? Is there something specific that makes you sad or makes you angry that uh, when you think about it, you wonder, why has nobody solved this problem? Well, I think actually you have that power. And so maybe that problem, that person should be you who gets the motion started to solve that problem. So what do I mean with that? Um, I'll tell you, but first I'll tell you a little bit about myself. So my name is Pete. I um, I'm a techie. I've been programming computers since uh, my dad first brought home uh, an old ZX81 when I was 10 years old. And I used to go down to the news agents and buy a magazine that had programs in it, in basic, and I'd type them into my computer and make games so that there would be a penguin on the screen. And when I pushed my joystick left, the penguin would go left. And when I pushed it right, the opposite would happen. And when I pressed space, the little penguin would jump up and down. And uh, wow, I really lo it, it would take hours to do this, but I loved it. So eventually, I turned that into a career where I would learn some new thing about tech. And then I would look for a job that would let me play around with that at work. And then I'd move on to the next thing, solve some problems, move on to the next thing. And I think that's quite typical about techies. We look for the work that allows us to play with the tech that we find most enjoyable. But it wasn't until later in life that I started to look at uh, what is this thing that I'm doing actually made to do? If I succeed, what is going to happen? And the impact that I was having on society, actually, I realized I'm not too happy with this in, in a lot of cases. So, for example, one project was, the whole point of it was to make 60 people redundant. And I thought, how happy am I that that's going to be written on my tombstone? So I started to pay a bit more attention to what it was that, that I was doing with, with tech. And I decided to only work at companies where I really believed in their mission. So at the moment, I'm working for a, a company whose mission is to help people get control of their finances. And that's a mission that I can really get behind. That's something that's quite exciting. Let me tell you concretely what that means. So in the UK, we're bad at looking after our money. Um, there's no easier way that I can say that. But if there were league tables, in fact, there are league tables. The World Bank has got a league table, which puts us right at the bottom for things like saving. So how much do we save as, you know, as a ratio of how much we earn? In, in general, in the world, that's about 24%. In countries like China, where they're right at the top of the league tables, they save about half of everything they earn. And we in the UK save 11%. And that's come down, actually, since I started using this statistic two years ago. Um, so we're pretty bad, you know, for all of these reasons of looking after our money. And we think we've got a small chance of being able to fix that. And wow, isn't that a massive, juicy, interesting problem to solve? So when I get out of bed in the morning to go to work, and I'm rushing in all excited like a Labrador to go and do that, it's so, OK, I still get to play around with technology and solve fun problems. But it's also something that I can really believe in that's making an impact on the world. And I, so I think it's important that, that anyone who's involved in tech think about the impact that they're having. But that's more the case now than ever. Because the tech, the power of the tech that we have at our fin fingertips is crazy powerful nowadays. So if, when I was a young guy, I could make a penguin move around on the screen, now young people who are getting into tech have got the power of AI, the power of cloud computing, the power of Internet of Things, the power of mobile, the power of satellites, all of that kind of thing at their fingertips. Um, so that means that the impact that it's having on the world is so much bigger. And this, is a, this power curve is, is exponential like that. So it's getting more and more powerful all the time, and the rate is, is speeding up. Um, so if we think of some of the things that, that um, the tech is being used for nowadays, it's being used for good and bad, you know, depending on your point of view. On the one end of the spectrum, you've got uh, autonomous weapons. Uh, so weapons that can look at a crowd of people and think, OK, you look like an enemy, you look like a friend, you look like a civilian, and then decide who autonomously to shoot at or to drop bombs on. Uh, we've got tech that is being used in quite a sophisticated way to influence the elections in other people's countries. <coughs> so then at the other end of the spectrum, we've got you know, tech being used for nice things. So a couple of things I can't believe are happening in the world at the moment. I've, I've been looking at this all my life, and I can't believe this kind of thing is happening. So on the one hand, AI is being used to help PTSD sufferers. So people who have been in a war or some other very traumatic experience to help them come to terms with that and re-enter their lives, it's very helpful from a psychological perspective to get them to talk about what they've been through. 
And that is so much easier in a context when they feel that they're truly anonymous. And what we've, what we've measured in, in the world of AI is that vets will open up more with an avatar that they know is not human, but they feel is listening. And this kind of anonymous intimacy works really, really well, in, in often more, uh, cap more effectively than, um, uh, than, than human psychiatrists. Um, in another area, which is, this is my favorite area of, um, of AI, uh, it's called affective computing. That's effective with an A, to do with our emotions. Um, in schools, they're using uh, techniques to, to tell how the, the class is getting on. So an effective AI can tell what our emotions are from uh, our facial expressions, from our tone of voice, by how much energy is in our voice, um, by how conductive our skin is and our heart rate. You know, our webcam can tell all of these things. Um, and they can tell, they can make a very good guess as to what we're feeling. And this is being used in classrooms to tell the teacher how she's getting along. So when, when I look at you guys, I can tell that you're listening. Uh, thanks a lot for doing that. <laughs> you seem interested in what I'm saying. And you're listening. You're giving me a smile. You're engaged in what I'm saying. But imagine if, and you know, maybe some people are not listening. I'm not going to say anything. But there are, imagine if you're in a class of 30 or 40 children, and you're trying, to, you're trying to get a feel of, am I doing well as a teacher? So these AIs can tell the teacher, you know, 20% of your class have switched off. This percentage are frustrated. This, fr this percentage are confused. This percentage are bored. Maybe you should try a different tack. Maybe you should use a different analogy. Maybe you should go slower. Um, you know, those kinds of things. And this same tech actually is being used for um, people who suffer with Asperger's uh, or autism to give them a feel for what is the mood in the room at the moment. Um, this, all of these it, vibes that I'm getting that I don't understand, the AI can, can understand and inform me so that I can, so that those people can just feel more relaxed in a socially anxious setting. Um, aren't those really good uses of, of AI? And to be honest, AIs that can understand and influence our emotion, I never thought I'd see the day in my lifetime. So AI uh, has a huge impact on the world. What is that impact going to be? Where do we think that this should lead us? So we have got a choice. I mean, we can't just let it lead us down the default path. If we don't do anything, then the, the power of technology will just make the world more like it is at the moment. Is that what we want? So if we're happy with the way that capitalism works, the way that the disparity between the rich and the poor is growing larger and larger all the time, the way that the pace of life is speeding up and we're all feeling stressed and unhappy, the way that we're consuming all of the world's resources, the way that the family unit is breaking down. Are we happy with all of that? Because if we are, tech is just going to, by default, make all of that more so. But I'm not happy with that. Maybe you're not either. There is another route, actually, and some people are already on this other route. And that's the route where people look at this world as like, wow, an interesting buffet of fascinating problems and puzzles to choose from to go and solve. And on the one hand, you've got all of these interesting puzzles, you know, some people view problems as puzzles. And over here, you've got uh, all of this interesting tech that can be plugged together like Lego. Why do I say that? Why do I say plugged together like Lego? Because so much of it is available for free. So if you're, if you're a scientist, and we've got scientists sitting here in the audience today, scientists, after they've researched and studied something for years, will write a paper. And then they will share that paper with anybody who's willing to read it. And if you know a little bit about computers, and you know a little bit about maths, and you can just type that into your computer and get the results of this super powerful tech or idea or, or approach that, that this scientist has just invented. And in, um, you know, without paying for it. And in, uh, in tech in general, there's this really amazing, vibrant uh, culture of sharing uh, where dozens or sometimes even hundreds of thousands of developers will come together to swarm around a problem to build something that they will then share for free with the rest of the world. And this is amazing. You can just take all of this stuff and plug it together like Lego. So we've got the problems. We've got the solutions. What are we going to do with that? I think the world is a little bit like a maker space. Where Have you ever been to a maker space? Let me just show you what it, what it looks like. A maker space is like a lab. If you want to build things and you don't have a lab in your house, you can go to a public one maybe at a library or in a school or you know, in Shoreditch or places like that. Um, and there'll be, there'll be drawers full of LEDs, and there'll be drawers full of resistors. And over here, there's a soldering iron. And over there, there's a laser cutter. And over there, there's a 3D printer and uh, oscilloscopes and all of that interesting stuff. Um, 
And then there's people on hand to help you. Oh, Jeff, I've never used an oscilloscope before. Can you help me out to use it? There'll be people on hand to show you how to use it. And I think the world is a lot like that. There's all of this tech available. So who are the people who can help us figure out how to use it? Well, that's people like Stanford University, people like Caltech, people like MIT, who are putting their best resources online for free for you to go and learn. Um, so there's this platform called Coursera, where if you want to learn about machine learning, one of the world's foremost AI authorities, Andrew Ng, has put together a course, 11 weeks. It's free. You can just go and do that and learn how to make a neural network. So we've got the problems, we've got the solutions, we've got the people to help us match those two things together. But what is missing? The ideas. The ideas are missing. And what is bad about this is that where the place that we used to look for ideas, like tomorrow's world, tomorrow's world is no more. Sci-fi doesn't really talk about a positive future anymore. Have you ever noticed that? So whereas in the past, Star Trek would be about this lovely post-scarcity society where um, there was no more war, people didn't need to work for money, and everybody had very fascinating, enriching work to do, exploring the universe, starting restaurants, um, doing all of that kind of thing for their own fun. People don't tell stories like that anymore. It's seen as being quite cheesy to speak about a positive future. But the problem is, if we can't imagine a better future, we can't build it. So this is where you come in. <laughs> if you're a techie, great. Please choose the projects that you're going to be working on, because you've got great powers. Wield them wisely. If you're not a techie, can you tell us what to do? Can you tell us where to go? If you've got an idea, you've got something that you're really upset about, and you think, if only somebody could build X, well, you know what? It's quite likely that we can build X either now or in the near future because technology is going like this. Go and find a techie and wow them with your idea and be passionate about it. And they were programmers are just looking for people to, to give them interesting problems to solve that will have some impact on the world. If you've got an idea, come and share it. There's a community for you actually, if you're in that uh, if you're in that group called Meetup.com. Um, where people will get together on a variety of subjects to talk about Internet of Things, to talk about AI, to talk about yada yada, um, about their ideas, what they want to build, and techies will get together and, and be really excited. Um, when I moved to the, to, the, to the area, to Leamington Spa, I wanted to get involved in the AI community and found that there wasn't one. So I started one, and I called it uh, Birmingham Artificial Intelligence Meetup, or Brum AI for, for short. And uh, we meet every month. There's about 380 of us. Uh, we meet up, we, we have a beer and some pizza, and we talk about the ideas that are around in the world at the moment. What are people using AI for? What could AI be used for in the future? What, what, people, what projects people can get involved in? Why don't you come along and pitch your idea? Because it's quite likely that there'll be a few techies who are really bright, who've got such amazing powers, but don't know what to turn their attention to. So please, help us to imagine a better future. Because if we can imagine a better future, we've now got the power to build it.